Hello and Happy New Year. I'm Nick Amell, host of Tennis Podcast. Normally on this show, we cover top tennis lists, but we're going to do something a little different today. If you haven't heard, we suffered a big loss recently. The co founder and original co host of Tennis Podcast, my good friend Brandon Kaufman, he passed away in December. He battled a serious health condition for the last two years, but he's finally at rest now. Brandon was an amazing friend who everyone loved to be around because he always made us laugh. That's what made him such a perfect podcast host. Brandon was smart, well-spoken, always up for a deep discussion, but above all, he made us laugh. And that's what he's going to do today as well, on this episode. Here in a moment, this episode is going to cover my personal favorite moments with Brandon from the 160 episodes we did together in the first three years of this podcast. You'll hear the classics, like his body elves, his Dr. Phil impersonation, the licking machine, but you'll hear a lot more than that too. Brandon had no shortage of cheeky moments, and you'll get to hear a ton of them right here. I'd love to hear your favorite memories of Brandon on the show. Please send them my way by tagging me on Instagram, Facebook, X, or any other social site. You can tag us at TennisPod, that's at 10ISHPOD, or if you prefer, send me an email at TennisPod at gmail.com. I'd love to reminisce with you. One more thing before we get to the good shit. Brandon was a great podcast host, an even better friend, but most importantly, he was a loving father and husband. And despite what you'll hear in a few moments, his family was in fact not inflatable. They were very real. And they're still trying to find a way to move forward after losing him. If you feel compelled, and if you are able, I have a way for you to support his family. Send a donation to me on PayPal or Venmo. The PayPal email is tennispod at gmail.com. And our Venmo username is at tennispod. Anything you send will go directly to Brandon's family. We'll return to all new episodes soon. But in the meantime, thank you for your support, not just now, but for all the years of support. And thank you to Brandon for his years of friendship and grade A podcast content. Speaking of which, let's get to it. This is a collection, in no particular order, of my personal favorite moments with Brandon from Tennis Podcast. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Now I just want to look at pictures of anamorphs. So here's a uh <laughs> what? There's one the subtitle says. I have to send it to you. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm I'm clicking furiously. <laughs> Look at the second to last picture right before he turns into a human. <laughs> I want all of our listeners to look up the book Animor- <laughs> Animorphs The Discovery. <laughs> look at the middle picture. <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> He's got his hands in his pockets still. <laughs> this kid starts as a cobra. And he transforms into a, does... a child wearing a red shirt, red plain shirt and dad jeans <laughs> belted up. The fucking smug look on his face. <laughs> he still looks smug in that second to last picture too. This is a must see. Animorphs the Discovery. Uh, everyone... Look it up. There's a girl turning into a starfish. Starfish, holy shit. But, holy Why would moly. you want to be a starfish? Imagine how... How ripped off you'd feel as an animorph if you got the starfish. <laughs> Your friends get to be a tiger or a or a dog, and you're a starfish. There's one where a little boy crouches down and becomes a roach. Send it. <laughs> becomes a little roach, and he crouches down like he's just accepting his fate. He's like, okay. <laughs> I'll get down. <laughs> oh my god. God damn. Oh my god. Here's a little boy turning into a duck. <laughs> you have to you have to stop. Uh, man, nothing is gonna beat that, f- <laughs> that first that f- <laughs> His hands in the pockets are what kills me on the third one. This middle this middle two pictures. The- 
face. I saw that middle one look so, so despondent. Like in the middle of it, he realized what was happening. He didn't want to become a boy again. No, but he's smirking in the in his final state. Yeah, I know I'm hot. <laughs> Holy shit. Imagine all the chicks you'd get if you were a snake boy. <laughs> He's saying, hey, bitch, watch this. <laughs> you girls want to see some shit? Get ready to get wet. <laughs> With a sky blue background. Yeah. Like, I don't understand the background either. <laughs> He's standing. He's not every, flying. The background of every single one of these, it's like they just picked a random, like, I don't know, fucking clouds. What color are you with clouds? Orange. Just make them orange. How about on this one, green? I don't know. Fucking fire. Put some fire back there. I like how it's a husband-wife duo writing these. Does that mean they take turns writing sections? I mean, what does that even mean? I write the snake, you write the boy. <laughs> I'll meet you in the right. middle. Yeah, how, how come he doesn't have clothes on when he's a snake, but when he, uh. when, he tur- when he anamorphs, he's immediately clothed in the most late 80s outfit I've ever seen? He's, those are some fucking relaxed fit jeans. <laughs> you think a snake wouldn't be worried about that. Well, a snake likes to shed his skin, am I right? Well, boomers are also searching for old man with young girl. <laughs> <laughs> the, the search, to, like what people type into porn, I mean, I realize it's, there's lots of different reasons why it's simple, but it sounds so caveman and animalistic, like... Some guy sitting there naked with his dork out and typing in a computer. And <laughs> Would goes, you just call things what they are? Do you have to have a fucking gross word for everything? <laughs> well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep you on your toes. Uh, his dork. He's got his dork out and he's typing away and he's like, oh, I would make my wiener feel good, old man, young girl. <laughs> he pounds it out on the keyboard and then he pounds it out on his lap. Uh, I don't like to think about it that. It reminds me of ordering at a drive through like because they've simplified the drive through you know, uh, the combo meals where you can just say you want a number. You can just li- just drive up and grunt a number at them and they'll give you food. <laughs> yeah, soon you can just verbally grunt oh. to Pornhub and it'll, <laughs> it'll just pull up. They're like, oh, some... when you like, oh, oh. And you... Well, you mentioned uh, on this note, I also have the top six most common words found in the comments on Pornhub. <laughs> One's got to be baby. <laughs> for, th- for, those <laughs> for those that don't frequent porn sites like Brandon, uh, usually there's the video. Right. It's basically just a porn YouTube. You know, YouTube, you can like the video, you can comment, you can subscribe to the person. So these are the comments on the videos, and I have the top six. These, you ready? The comments on porn <laughs> videos make the comments on YouTube look like fucking Shakespeare. <laughs> All right, you want to know the first one? Let me guess. One, yeah, I'm going to guess, guess uh, we're damn, baby, <laughs> and come are, are three of the top words. Yeah, and it will be something like, damn, baby, I'd make you come so fast once you well, come It's not here. even as much as that. It's just like, damn, baby, I come hard. <laughs> <laughs> as if that woman wants you to call her baby. Yeah. Actually, none of those are in the top six, um, but you're, you're in the right mindset. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dopey. Uh, number six, number six is <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is nice. <laughs> I stuck uh, uh, 14 inches worth of anal beads up my ass and all this guy, somebody watched, it's 14 minutes long. Somebody just goes, nice. <laughs> I'm going to praise all the effort. Number five is kind of surprising. Pretty. Uh, except I think, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like you're on a porn site, but then you have to be like, you're so beautiful. I don't think they're you're talking so about their face. Number four, uh, just sexy. Boring. <laughs> bit. Yeah. Three is like. Mm-hmm. So, what do they say in there? I like this. I like it. <laughs> I like it when the cum comes out. <laughs> Two is love. Uh huh. I love it when the cum comes out. <laughs> and one is good. So maybe good job, good work, good scene. Feel good. <laughs> I mean, neither one of us are 
or two into uh, to Valentine's Day. We don't like walk around crapping on it and, or right puffing out our chest about it. <laughs> but no, we don't. I'm sure your wife is able to puff out her chest because when you inflate her and deflate her. Sure. I have an entire inflatable family. <laughs> <laughs> Entire inflatable. The my yeah, I went to my my inflatable kindergartner's Valentine's Day party today, and uh, got and a, everyone's just like looking at you at the side of their eye, like who is this man with the inflatable child? Keep those scissors away from my son. <laughs> I love it. I mean, we he's a hemophiliac. I want to explore the inflatable child, uh, inflatable family, my inflatable so. family. So, in your everyday life, is it known to you that your family's inflatable or are you in denial? There's, there's two sides to every coin. So, I know that they're inflatable, but I figure that's just why they're so easy for me to um, take yeah. care of and tend to. I'll tell you the, the best thing about inflatable children, they can't fucking whine in the car when the road trip is longer than three minutes. If you sit on them like a whoopee cushion, they will. And you, you also don't got to clean their asses. That's true. God bless. Someone's always shitting, pissing, or barfing over here. Yeah, and think about the the grocery budget is drastically reduced. Um, all you gotta do is buy inflatable air, uh, you know, inflatable what are the uh, air pressure things? Uh, that's their food source. I pre- prefer to use my lips. Oh God! I don't have to buy very much yogurt or grapes to feed children. I just <laughs> grapes. I have to buy uh, electrical tape and other plastic patching. Sure. Uh, for your inflatable wife, does she wear lipstick on Valentine's Day? Uh, only if I dramatically apply it. And you know what the best part about an inflatable wife is? Hmm. She uh, puts out whenever you want, am I right? <laughs> no. <laughs> My inflatable wife won't touch me. It's not only the number one most common workplace injury, but it is also the most expensive. So, this is all those injuries you get like you try to lift something too heavy. It could also be your back, pulling your back out. And I think it's related to reaction injuries. If you're reacting to someone and you push their butt away or you pull their butt close or you lift their butt out of your field of vision or you or you pull the butt onto your field of vision directly on. You hold the butt when it's trying to get away, <laughs> or you carry the butt to show a friend, or you try to throw a butt. All of those things would cause you to overexert yourself. You're in the, like the lunchroom and you're like, hey, Fred, check out this butt, and you throw it across the room. Mm-hmm. It could hurt either one of you. Yeah, it was a two part Dr. Phil I watched with my wife, and it was shocking. And how did Dr. Phil sound when he presented this information? I can't believe what I'm hearing. (laughs) How did you sit in the same room (laughs) with this man (laughs) who is Jared from Subway? (laughs) Dr. Phil, you know, he just really wants to help people. He doesn't want to just use this for ratings for two weeks and play these disgusting fucking tapes for... for, uh, He's just really looking to help everybody out. Now, I'll tell you what. You can put a tick on a dog's ear. Okay. Uh, That's it. He had an aneurysm after that. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Then Moses, he goes up the mountain and gets the Ten Commandments. He hustles them back down the mountain. When he gets back, these idiots, and it's just the time it took him to go up the mountain and get these stone tablets. They have made a golden, (laughs) a, a cow made out of gold, and that's their new god. But why? I have a lot of questions. And it happened in the amount of time it took him to get up and down a mountain. And he comes back down the mountain. He sees the golden calf and all these idiots are around worshiping it. And he's like, God damn it. And he breaks the Ten Commandments and he's like, fuck, that was another thing I wasn't supposed to do. Say God damn it. So, he's like, all right, everybody, calm the fuck down. Uh, also, we're going to melt down this cow. And if, when I came down here, if I saw you worshiping the cow, we're going to pour the molten gold into your mouths. So, this is God and Moses murdering a bunch of people on God their own. God and Moses murdered people all the time. No, I know, but I just want to underline this point for people that are not familiar with Because I had forgotten that, that they force-fed them all the gold. Yeah, shouldn't have done it. Well, anyway, 
After that, they wandered through the desert for 40 years. <laughs> they should have stuck with the calf. Well, Golden Grahams does have a bear, but the one you might be thinking of is Sugar Crisp. Sugar Crisp has that bear that looks, he looks either sleepy or sneaky or high. His eyes are kind of like droopy. The Honey Smacks frog looks like he is just insane. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to be stuck in a dark alley with the, the Smacks frog. What is it? Honey Smacks? I think it's Honey Smacks. I'm looking him up. I haven't seen him in a long time. It's just the impression that the Honey Smacks frog left me with was like, oh yeah, he looks absolutely insane. <laughs> His mouth is just wide open. His eyes couldn't be bigger. <laughs> and yeah, I was right about that stupid ass bear. But look, his cereal just looks like a bunch of butts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it does. It looks like little butts. And his shirt says, dig em. Is that his catchphrase or something? Dig em? Yeah. Like D-I-G-M? Yeah, he wants you to dig into them with your spoon and eat them. Now, what I was most excited to talk to you about was some studies done to get to the center of the answer of the question, how many yeah. legs does it take to get to the center of Tootsie Pop? A study done by Purdue University concluded that it took an average of 364 licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop using a licking machine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which was later what? taken home by some of the employees <laughs> on a rotating basis. A licking machine. Someone had to cr create uh, this licking machine for the sole intent, well, in quotes. Wasn't that your nickname in high school? <laughs> but I, I like that a huge university like Purdue took the time to not only do this study, but to concoct a licking machine God. To, get to, <laughs> to get to the answer of it. I've had a breakthrough on the licking machine today. <laughs> oh, you found out how many licks it takes to get to the center? No, it became my boyfriend. <laughs> no, but it tosses a hell of a salad. <laughs> This is all a uh, misdirection by a really horny dean <laughs> to get that. So, how's that licking machine coming along? <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of this Tootsie Pop business. God damn. I found additional funding for the licking machine <laughs> in my wallet. Head down to Home Depot. <laughs> Here's my bank card. Fuck. Why did we do the tennis podcast? Let's cancel this idea because I just want to talk about the licking machine full time. <laughs> the licking machine podcast? <laughs> I like Theodore Roosevelt. I know, you I get a hard on for him every time his name comes up. He is a fun president. Uh, he's the 26th president. He served two terms from 1901 to 1909, an estimated IQ of 149. Theodore Roosevelt graduated from Harvard in 1880. You know, Harvard and law school in the 1800s, I mean, it's got to be just a few steps up from like... <laughs> Rub <laughs> rubbing sticks together, right? In the fucking woods. <laughs> okay, Ugo Booga. <laughs> I graduated Ugo Booga from Harvard in 1880. <laughs> uh, no. I mean, how impressive is it really, right? I mean, <laughs> I like how you think if you went back in time before like 1940, everybody was a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> with like neatly manicured mustaches and hats and stuff but just mumbling bumbling grunting idiots well think about it they were closer to cavemen than we are now can't deny that yeah that's true <laughs> i mean technically you on monday is <laughs> closer to caveman when he dresses up as a girl bunny he drives elmer fudd and yosemite sam crazy with lust Wait, what? You know, like, he dresses up like a girl bunny sometimes to trick Elmer Fudd or Yosemite Sam. Yeah. And they always fall for it. They always are like, it's not just like, like oh, that's not Bugs Bunny, that's a girl rabbit. It's not just that. They oh, are. Oh, right. They want it. They want it bad. Helplessly sexually attract. They are like, <laughs> they are. F they turn into Pepe Le Pew. They start, yeah, they start for foaming at the mouth trying to fuck this bunny. Which there's a couple of things wrong with that. One, it's a bunny, which is interspecies sex relations, yeah. which I mean, that might be fine for James Cameron's avatar, but it's not fine in the real world. And number two, it's also bugs and, and drag. All it takes is red lipstick. Yeah. And a couple of fake boobs.
No, bananas are kind of weird, right? Yeah. There's not many other fruits like a banana. Now, most of the fruits we talk about today are technically types of berries. Bananas are a type of berry. They have been described as a leathery berry. They're not a berry. It's wrong. Well, that's what this fucking thing described it as. They got a protective outer layer, peel, or the skin, with numerous long, thin strings. Those yucky little strings that run lengthwise between the skin and the edible inner portion. I hate those little strings. I hate them too. They seem gross. I know they're technically not, but something about them, I'm like, get the fuck out of here, you little guy. <laughs> you little boogery thing. The monkeys eat them. Well, I've monkeys also, don't give a fuck. I've also watched a monkey hold his hand below his asshole, <laughs> catch the poo before it hit the ground, and then eat it straight from the tap. Okay. Why you got fucking shit on monkeys like this on the show? I'm We're going to be hearing from all kinds of monkey, monkey enthusiasts. The monkey shit on himself, and I watched it. <laughs> Have you ever thought about like at a football, at, at the Super Bowl or any big sporting event like that? All those people there, there's probably what, 70, 80, 90,000 people there. All of them have a bunch of little elves inside them <laughs> telling them when to pee and stuff. So if you think about it, how many elves would you have guessed when you were a kid? How many elves do you think per person? Oh, I don't know. It, d- depending on when I thought about it, oh God, I w- let's just say 20. 20 elves mechanically controlling your bodily functions. You get more elves as you grow too, by the way. (laughs) Are they fucking and like giving birth? I don't know. They just develop. But like, I mean, once you hit puberty, you got to have a couple of elves working the balls. You thought there was elves pushing pee out? (laughs) It's literally the stupidest (laughs) thing I've ever heard (laughs) God damn, it's really bad. I want to make a cartoon show that's about the elves that work inside a body. Nobody in the history of the world has ever thought that there's elves inside of a body. Well, then that's a really awesome thought then because a lot of shit has been thought before, but if I I just came up with a brand new one. Now, did you think that the elves were pushing the pee out like they were all like (laughs) kind of like they were all leaning on a log that was being pushed through like a cave hole? Yes. Yes, like a yellow log of pee that they would push out and it became liquid when it exited my wiener. <laughs> Your wiener. You're not allowed to ever say that again. Well, when I was a kid, it was my wiener. It wasn't my no. fucking hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got news for you. It's still not your hog. McDonald's purchased an artificial intelligence startup called Apprenti. Specifically to replace the human servers in the drive through with speaking robots. Uh, hey, I'm on board with that. Well, I, I mean, I am too from a practical standpoint. It annoys me to no end when you pull up and they say like, you know, blah, 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 can I get for you? And you slowly and clearly start telling them the things that you would like to pay for. <laughs> then after that, they cut in like you, you just interrupted them playing a video game and they're like, wait, what? Okay, <laughs> hold on a second. I got the first part where you said I want. And I stop listening. Can you slow down? Slow down. I'm not a robot. Well, not yet. My reason for being happy with the robots is based solely and exclusively on the fact that it's one less person that has the opportunity to spit in my food before I get it. <laughs> they, it they're developing a robot that can spit. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes down. There's a little thing that comes down over the uh, grill and just... <laughs> It very efficiently spits into, onto all the patties. But maybe the spit can just be like the Big Mac secret sauce and then it's like, okay, <laughs> spit all over it. My next note is just the bullet point that says Nick doesn't know how to iron. Okay. So, let's address this big fucking elephant in the room, why don't we? Because Brandon keeps alluding to it. Brandon and I used to work together and we would travel a lot for work. And at these work functions, we'd have to bring nice clothes, sometimes even suits. And on one of these trips, I confided as a friend to Brandon that ironing is maybe my least favorite thing in the world. It's not that I don't know how to do it. It's that I hate doing it. And It's that you refuse to do it. No. That came later because I convinced Brandon to iron my shirts for me one time. <laughs> I was so tired of showing up looking like I was bringing my mentally retarded brother with me everywhere. I would have rather worn wrinkled shirts than spend the time to iron because that's how much I hate ironing. But I convinced Brandon to iron my shirts and he'll say that it's because he was sick of me looking like a, you know, whatever he just said. 
But I think deep down he enjoyed it. He felt closer to me. It was a bonding thing for him. But also, let's bring about the critical point here that you would have left out, I think. You didn't just iron that one time. You definitely ironed on more than one trip for me. Yeah, because you kept looking like a fucking idiot. <laughs> so anyone, if, if you ever need clothes ironed, send Brandon a tweet at Sidekick Coast. Send him your clothes. You can work it out in the DMs and he'll iron your clothes for you. And if you ever... He did a great job. If you ever want to be seen with someone who looks like they stuck their dress shirt under the mattress of their bed the night before they slept on That's it. That's a good idea. I never thought of that. You know what I'd do, though? I'd hang my dress shirt up in the bathroom while I was taking a hot shower. That never seemed to do anything. It doesn't do jack shit. But laying it on the mattr- under the mattress, I don't know why I never thought of that. I almost want another work trip with you now so we can test the theory out. But I haven't worn a dress shirt in, I don't know, <laughs> fucking few years now. Forgot how to work it. a button. Mm-hmm. Typhoid Mary didn't wash her, like purposely was like, I'm not washing my hands. Typhoid is a bacterial infection that can lead to high fever, diarrhea, and vomiting. It can be fatal. It is called yeah, salmonella. The, salmonella, yeah. Yeah, salmonella poisoning. Also called enteric fever. Typhoid Mary... This lady kept taking a shit on her own hands and then like <laughs> doing surgery on people. Typho- so her name was Mary Mallon, also known as Typhoid Mary, was an Irish American cook. She wasn't doing no. surgery. <laughs> she was cooking with shit. She was the first person in the US identified as a symptomatic carrier of the pathogen associated with typhoid fever. She was presumed to have infected 51 people, three of whom died over the course of her career as a cook. So, fuck you, Typhoid Mary. How long was that career? Uh, she died in 1938. She was forcibly isolated by health authorities. Oh, man. Uh, she admitted that she did not understand the purpose of hand washing because she did not pose a risk. In prison, she was forced to give stool and urine samples. Authorities suggested removing her gallbladder because they believed typhoid bacteria resided there. She was also unwilling to cease working as a cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Well, this is me. Do you understand? Shitting on my hands, <laughs> reaching into raw chicken, and then making food to feed hungry people. That's me. <laughs> you want me to stop being me? I mean, I know she was naughty and she did all this stuff and she killed a lot of people, but she did have a hell of an ass. I mean. Ugh. So, Adolf created Adidas. And his brother, Rudolph, established Puma, which became Adidas' business rival. Did you know that? I did not know that. Puma was founded by the brother of the Adidas guy. I can run a shoe company as well. (laughs) I would call it Puma. I'll put it right next to you. Stop. Oh, fuck. (laughs) What does an Adidas even mean? Mine is named after a mighty Puma. (laughs) Fuck, you might have to do the rest of the show without me, Jesus Christ. (sighs) Get it together. Slap yourself. I've already been slapping myself under the table. (laughs) (laughs) She's known professionally as Nicki Minaj. She is a Trinidadian-born rapper, singer, and songwriter, best known for her Mm. animated flow in her rapping and her versatility as a recording artist. Early in her career, Minaj became known for colorful costumes and wigs, her distinct flow, and her use of alter egos and accents, primarily British Cockney. And her booty. Uh, Yeah, also known her physique, notably her buttocks has attracted significant uh-huh. attention from the media. Early in her career, she made off autographing breasts, part of her movement to empower women. In 2010, she said that although she originally felt obligated to mimic the provocative behavior of female rappers of her day, she intended to subdue her sexuality because she wants people, especially young girls, to know that in life, nothing is going to be based on sex appeal. You have to have something else to go with that. Also, she has butt implants. <laughs> I was going to say, the stuff about like subduing her sexuality, that doesn't sound like the Nicki Minaj I know. Heart disease. Heart disease, 16% of all deaths. I did it. Brandon, how would Dr. Phil categorize this top 10 list? 
This is a mess of shit y'all need to avoid <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> Stay off the road. Quit your breathing. <laughs> quit your breathing? <laughs> Stop eating your sugars. Fuck. Hey, do you... Since we're doing impersonations now, do you... Fill in the blank. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any closing words for our adoring fans? Keep it real. Keep it real. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.